It's now time to add the second step. To get started, I'm working off of 04 secondstepaep inside the Chapter 3 source files if you wish to follow along. Before I dive in and start animating, I want to go into my preferences and turn off motion paths. Motion paths appear when you start to animate within After Effects, and in many cases they can be very useful as they show you basically where the element is moving at any point. You can see a guide of sorts as you start to add animation. The problem with the Puppet Pin tool that I've discovered is these motion paths can sometimes get in the way when trying to move pins around. You can accidentally click on them and adjust other motions that you don't want to impact. So I recommend if you're on a Mac going up to After Effects CC and then Preferences and then going to Display. If you're on Windows, you'll find the Preferences menu under Edit. But we're going to go to Preferences and then Display. And here you have the Motion Path option. Once again, at least for right now, I recommend turning this off. And then once you're done and you move on to other animation, you might want to turn this back on. So once you're good, we can click OK and we can resume work. Since the last video, I went ahead and renamed the stride lines. So I've named this one right stride line and left stride line, just so that's noted. And I want to advance now 12 frames on the timeline. So we have 0012 within the preview time. Whenever you add pins, you are automatically set up to interpolate with that pin. So everything that's been added does not need to be stopwatched. We can just jump in and start adding animation. Making sure we select the puppet under Red Thunder Separated. We're going to come in and move the back foot forward. That way we have an easier time moving the front foot back because this step is basically going to be the opposite of what you see here. Everything is going to shift directions. So we'll use Command P or Control P if you're on Windows to select the Puppet Pin tool. I'm going to lasso the foot and we're just going to bring it over like so, just for right now. Then, still with the Puppet Pin tool, I will lasso the front foot and bring that back to the back stride. And we'll also grab the knee and try to straighten that out as well. Now, I'm going to bring that up just a little bit like this so I can easily access the back leg knee because now I just want to come in and shift this forward so that it goes to the front stride line. And then we can bring the knee up like this. And bring this one back like so to kind of get everything in place. Zooming in, I might have to do some work with the tops of the legs. So I can come in here and try to make those adjustments. And then let me use the selection tool because that's sometimes easier to work with here. Oh, that's the pelvis. Here's our back leg. We can come in and move that up like so. Now our front leg is kind of sticking out a little bit and it might be okay because the back leg kind of covers it up. But if it becomes an issue, we can correct that before we wrap up the course. So now the second step is to move the arms in the opposite direction. I'll start with the front arm. I can just bring it forward like this and let me move the back arm back this way just to get it out of the way so we'll go like that and we can bring this one in a little bit more like so perhaps more like this there we are there if I scrub the timeline back and forth, you can see we have something that looks like this. And so far, so good. It's very rigid, and this is not what the final pose will look like. But it does give us a foundation to continue working off of. I'll pause the video here, and up next we'll talk about handling the third step of the cycle.